Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim from Pitsco Education. In today's RoboBench, I want to take a minute and talk to you about one of the fun projects we've done in the past, and that's the idea of using the, the potential of stored energy in the form of springs and adding that to your robot in the form of a partial suspension. So you might ask yourself why we want to do that and I'm going to go ahead and explain that. I've got some stuff here that we can bring out and hopefully I can identify for you exactly why this might be something you might want to take advantage of when you build your robots in the future. So bear with me just a minute. I'm going to bring everything out and we'll go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so I've got my three examples here to hopefully demonstrate the problem. I'm going to start with this simple four-wheel frame bot. This is one of the simplest bots that you can build as far as configuration for a drive base and because of that it's one that um, you see most often but what happens here because this is a solid frame my motors are attached to my frame all the way around I have four points of contact that are supposed to be on the surface all the time but what can happen and it doesn't this is going to be an exaggeration but it doesn't take much if one of those points of contact is for whatever reason raised it could be an irregularity in the surface that you're on. All of a sudden, you have a situation where the other two points are going to rock back and forth. And if one of those is the drive wheel, you're losing friction and, and contact there. And you're obviously, your robot is not going to drive straight anymore. Now, one of the things that people do sometimes is they will change from a four-wheel uh, configuration to a three-wheel. And obviously with a three wheel, again, example of that is I have three points of contact here. And even if I raise one of those, I still have three solid points of contact. There's no rock here because obviously like a three-legged stool, they're all going to be contacting the surface. Even though they're not level, it doesn't matter. You've got three solid points of contact. You can do something similar by adding a suspension. And this is partly why they would do that on a car. So here's my, my suspension body, and you can see I've got motion that is allowed with this suspension. And even if I raise one of those wheels, just like I did in my example here, you still see that I've got four points of contact. There's rock because of the, the suspension, but there's no loss of contact with my wheel. And that's why that's an advantage. So I'm not going to lose any of my contact patch. My robot is still going to behave like I expected to in a drive situation. So that's one of the reasons why you might want to add that to your bot. Let me go ahead and break that down a little further because I've got a small example to actually detail how you might want to do that. So let me bring that out. Okay, so I've got a small sub-assembly here because I thought it might be a little bit easier to actually see what we're doing that I can show this to you. And again, the idea behind this is that you've got some main features that you want to make sure that you include as part of your, your uh, suspension or partial suspension. I've got two basically arms that through a pivot point here at the bottom are going to move toward each other. And then between them, I have this compression spring that is actually fixed between this axle. And that's what allows for that suspension travel. So again, I have to have a solid point of contact on the bottom of this lever, a pivot point between the two levers, and then a solid point of contact at the top. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart so you can see there has to be the ability to rotate between that arm because the uh, levers as they move toward each other are going to travel through an arc. It's not a straight line. So again, they have to be able to pivot to account for that. So at the bottom of here, if you can see that, I'm just using an inside C inside of a regular piece of a channel. They're, they're dimensionally meant to be able to use in that way. I have an axle hub that is attached solid to the bottom of this first inside C. And then um, I have an axle that is affixed through the axle hub solidly to the bottom of that feature. And again, that becomes my shaft that this piece will slide up and down on. And between the two, obviously, I have a compression spring. Now, you could use whatever size compression spring that you need to be able to create the travel and the amount of suspension necessary to suit your particular application. Uh, and again, then at the top, I'm going to go ahead and fasten this back together just so we can look at the one of the things that you need to make sure that you account for at the top. As that travels through its um, arc, you'll see that that top bottom or that axle has to go through 
the top inside seating and travel up and, and be unobstructed because if this was obstructed, then you would actually lose your travel and that's not what you want to have happen. But if you'll notice here, as my bushings stick through and, and create that point of pivot, that I don't have a lot of room between this set collar and those axles. So you're going to have to do a little bit of, uh, of uh, adaption between the two so that when I'm going to show you what, how we did that on this particular bot. Let me turn it this way so you can see it head on. You'll see that I have two small axles that I actually cut down, set collars, and then instead of using a set collar on my shaft, my actual shaft that points my sliding pivot, we just bent that over because again, the only thing that you really want to make sure of is that that does not uh, remove itself through or slip through that bushing. So that's a potential uh, solution for you. Keep in mind, Ben Axel, all of a sudden then I've made this a specialty item. I'm not going to be able to use it again, unlike this version where I'm using a set collar. Now this axle, I really haven't damaged it in any way. I could use it as a typical regular axle in another application. So that's something that you might think about using and creating a partial suspension. Now I've been saying that several times and, and the reason that I am, and if you think about your car and the way that works, you not only have that spring action that allows for the travel of the wheel up and down, but you also have a dampener in the form of a shock absorber that helps control that dampening. And you've seen people that have cars that have bad suspension, or the suspension is going bad, it will bounce up and down uncontrollably. Well, that's not good. So you want that shock absorber to help dampen that action and control it. So. I'm gonna leave you with a challenge. So the idea is that you're gonna to have to think about what you can do to go ahead and add that dampening action to that uh, spring action here so that you can actually make it more controlled. Now before I forget, there's I'm used compression springs here, but that's not the only way that you could do this. You could also use expansion springs. If we extended this particular point of the lower arm out in this direction, past the pivot point, I've moved it on the opposite side of the pivot point, then I could use an expansion spring on this side, make a connection here and a connection at the bottom on this extended arm, and get the same type of, of return stored energy type of function in my arm. So again, that's something that you might think about in a, as a different way to apply that. That could be not only just a storage uh, expansion spring, but a rubber band would work the same way, or surgical tubing. All of those things have the, the uh, potential of using stored energy uh, to help mechanically uh, create a solution for you in your particular application. So, like we always say, have fun, build some robots, come back and see us.